The coach actually runs really well, reacting to twists, turns and undulations in the track as well as point work with remarkable ease. It's pretty free running. That extra ninth wheel, in inverted commas, actually doesn't touch the track. And uh, I think it works a lot better for that as well. Running around the layout, there's not even a hint of sway. It just glides around. Hi there to you. I hope I find you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you back to the channel. And today, I'm going to be showing you the Dynamometer Coach that was a Rails of Sheffield Special Commission uh, from Rapido Trains. And this really did set the bar incredibly high for the standard of coaching stock in the UK. At the time, it really was something that we just hadn't seen ready to run before in the UK. Now, Rails of Sheffield did really well with these. They sold out a long, long time ago, but if you've watched that video where I went and visited Rails, you'll know that their warehouse is a bit of an Aladdin's cave of stuff. In fact, I liken it to the warehouse at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And uh, they managed to dig out a few of these coaches that had been overlooked in there. And I was lucky enough to be able to pick one of these up. And I'm going to be taking a good close look at that for you today. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories. And I'm really looking forward to showing you this unique coach and one which can find a home on any model railway. And I'm really pleased to have one here on Wear Yard. <laughs> This is the model that I'm going to be reviewing today, the exclusive model of the LNER Dynamometer car, commissioned by Rails of Sheffield in their own branding here, and it was uh, done in conjunction with the Rally Museum and Rapido Trains. Now they are completely sold out at Rails of Sheffield, uh, both versions in fact, but I believe that the National Railway Museum may, certainly at the time of buying this, have a few of one of the two versions that was available but it really is a case of first come first served and when they're gone they really will be gone but on one of uh, rails of sheffield's archaeological digs through their warehouse they did unearth some of uh, these and uh, i jumped at the chance to get my hands on one it's a model that it rightly won awards at the time that it was first released and really did raise the bar on what we expected from models. The prototype, of course, does still exist. It's in the National Railway Museum. It's fame assured by being drawn behind Mallard on her record-breaking run that still remains uh, standing to this day for a steam-powered locomotive. It was originally built by the Great Northern Railway and uh, was a very useful coach. It did roam fairly widely uh, during the locomotive exchange trials. Um, it did see some use elsewhere on the British Rail network and lasted right through until the end of its working life when it was withdrawn and uh, put into the National Collection. So on the end here we've got the uh, Rails of Sheffield LNER Dynamometer Car version 1 and up there, 1938, I believe that's the date that this is suitable for, so pre-Second uh, World War. The packaging is a little bit different from what we get with uh, other manufacturer's items, but I'm just looking here, on the back there is a little detail bag actually full of some very, very fine etched pieces in there and a lot of pipe work for the buffer beam on the model. And uh, these really are some very, very fine brass etches. And uh, there are some full instructions in here on what to do with those. If we look at the um, actually rather comprehensive paperwork, so just going to fold that out. It does tell you there what to do with the optional parts that I've just shown you. Um, and some details on the interior lighting. We will get to that. And um, then we've got the full prototype history here. Uh, and essentially a dynamometer car is uh, a method whereby they can measure 
not just the speed that a train is running at, but there's a whole load of other instruments that allow um, things such as efficiency of combustion to be measured and the actual power that the locomotive is applying. And you've got to remember that way, way back in the 1920s, a lot of these would have been quite difficult to measure without um, some very specific uh, equipment. You can see here, it just goes through um, a lot of the details, the history of the car as it went on and on. Some details there about the exchange trials. So you could run this behind uh, Southern Railway Merchant Navy, West Country classes, GWR Kings, and LMS Royal Scots and Coronation class, as well as a whole host of other bits and pieces. Withdrawn December 1954 and then preserved by the Science Museum, currently at the National Railway Museum. And um, it is something that a lot of people have asked about. I don't know whether it's something that rails might consider in the future, not just more runs of these because they have sold out and have proved very popular, but also the original Great Northern Railway livery. Um, I'm guessing that there's probably some detail differences which may well um, cause some difficulty to make this model represent uh, that without some additional tooling. Now, don't be put off by this exploded diagram. It does show you what all the bits are, and there's a list of spare parts here, um, should you need any of these. But it just shows what goes into the making some of these special models, and this really was a special model. So I'm gonna put that to one side. We've gone through the history. And this packaging, it actually does remind me a little bit of the same style of packaging used by Acura Scale as well. And you can see there we've got the coach just sitting in here. It's going to put that carefully down there. And I'm sure your eye is also drawn to the wand. I think it's actually described as a writing wand in the, um, the actual uh, paperwork. And this is for turning the lighting in the coach on and off. Now, when we reviewed the Hornby six-wheel coach in that southern livery, it came with a magnet for turning the lights on and off, and people kind of went, oh, isn't this interesting? But actually, it's something that Rapido uh, have been doing for quite some time. Um, they're a big manufacturer in the US and Canada of um, US and Canadian outline stuff. Only comparatively recently started to get involved with the UK market. But this is something which is pretty common over there. So it's nice to see it incorporated into the UK outline model. Now, essentially, um, the magnet operates a reed switch hidden in the roof that lets you turn the lights on and off. But unlike those Hornby coaches, uh, what we don't get with this is the battery power. So this does pick up off the track, and I'll have to show you all of that later on once we get this model onto the track. The other thing that's very apparent out of the box is it's got this uh, lowerable extra wheel. So we've got um, the eight wheels across the two bogies, but then we've, in addition, got a ninth wheel here. And this is to do with the dynamometer functions. This could be lowered down onto the railhead, and that would give them a readout of the actual speed um, that they were going at. Um, so it's all part of the mechanism that's inside. And the interior is fully detailed with all the different instruments. They've gone out of their way to measure up the preserved real coach and get all of the details inside here absolutely right. And that's one of the reasons that uh, Rapido have gone for the internal lighting, because when you put that much effort into an interior, it really would be a bit, uh, a bit rude not to show it off. The uh, model comes with a very characteristic clerestory roof there, which is something that on ready-to-run rolling stock, we have seen some older, outclassed kind of coaching that has been modelled this way, um, but nothing apart from this in the more modern ranges. And it is something which I think modellers are crying out. So perhaps if the other manufacturers aren't going to revisit clerestory coaches and uh, make them ready to run in super fine detail, then maybe that's something that Rapido trains might consider for the future as they expand their range. The coach itself has this kind of faux teak pattern on the panelling. I think actually the, the real coach isn't teak, it's um, metal of some sort, and they had a technique for painting 
um, like a fake wood grain on metal. Um, it used to be big in the 1920s, 1930s. And if my memory serves me correct, it's something like scumble or, yes, yeah, scumble or scrumble. And you use a sponge to paint the wood grain effect on. Uh, but the actual coach was was done to match the rest of the coaching stock uh, on the railway company's uh, uh, lines. So it was painted to match, even though it's not actually wood. We've got it lettered up here as 23591 LNER branding on this. It, it's actually, if I just try and hold it there like that, you can just about see they're like a guard's ducket, and that's on both sides which does incorporate, at one end we've got this kind of streamlining, but then at the other we have some very small windows there so that you could actually look out along the train just like with a guard's ducket. Very, very big windows. We do also have guard's ducats at the end too. Now I'm going to look to the roof um, because the roof, again, the, the detail on this model runs all the way through it, but the roof, I really, really love this. We've got separately fitted handrails, not just these ones which are immediately apparent, but if I just hold this up there, you can see as well, we've got rails, and you just see it moving there, metal rails that run the full length of that clerestory, and I particularly like... It's almost like a stained glass type effect. I mean, the actual care and length of detail that these railway companies used to go to really, really is impressive. You would never see a, um, a modern equivalent of this get this kind of attention to aesthetic detail. That, I'm going to call it stained glass. I'm assuming it's stained glass. Really, really, look how sharp that is. There is not a hint of smudging on any of that. That really is ever so nice. Those torpedo vents as well, separately fitted detail. Really, really sharp and crisp and well done. And the more you look at this, the more you see the different colours, the different bits of finish, the detail picked out. So we're looking there at the end and we've got all of these, these bits and pieces it's just the closer you look, the more there is to find there with the, the lettering, loco pipe. Um, it's very difficult for me to read that on the viewfinder of the camera. So we've also got water gauge, insta plug, and you can see all of that trunking is picked out. Got CO2, I think, up at the top there. Looks like a warning bell. And you can just see the level of detail and that glazing as well. Flush really does look nice. The buffers as well, fully sprung. I mean, to be honest, with the level of detail on this coach, it's no expense spared. And um, they have pulled out all the stops to go to town on this. When we're looking in at the side there, you can just see that fully detailed interior. See the brake standard? Just... Um, just up and then to the right of my thumb, you can see it through the window. All of that internal bits and pieces. And all of this is completely accurate to the preserved model. They have thoroughly, thoroughly researched, measured everything. The glazing as well on the inside, you can see, is flush as well. And even down to... I'm just going to turn this round. I think there's some of the detail on the doors on the inside. And it's not just a mirror image. And what I do know from when I um, had to take the top off this just to investigate the lighting, there's even a toilet cubicle with a toilet in, which I'm just looking here. There's, there's actually no way of looking in and seeing it. But trust me, it is there. Those handrails on the side... They are all separately applied. Just really isn't anything to fault on this. The interior is exquisite. Looking to the underframe as well, this, this coach just keeps on giving. Not just is there a fully modelled and detailed underframe, but it's all functionally correct. Um, I mean, look, we've got the full mechanism there with the dynamo for the power, the vacuum braking system. And that extra wheel for the uh, the dynamometer functions, 
great rigging and that is all separately applied that is not molded on detail that is built up from separate components looking to the bogies as well we've got the all of the braking gear is fitted and of course we've got the pickups on the bogies so that the internal lighting just feeds off the track voltage now i believe now this does work on DC as well as DCC. It does not require a separate decoder putting into these, um, but uh, essentially on DC you will find that your uh, lighting does vary somewhat in brightness. Just looking as well, and there's like a a loud speaker of some sort as well hanging from the roof. It's just this coach just keeps on giving. You can also just about see hidden up in the clerestory uh, the lighting strip. So we've got lights throughout the full length of the coach. So just marvelling at the level of detail of this. The um, selling price was, I think it was around £140, something like that. And I'll be honest with you, whilst that is very expensive for a coach, you get an awful lot of coach for your money and you don't need a fleet of these you need one it's like a locomotive it's a one-off expense and this really is something special for your collection just looking there the, the corridor connections it looks like it's made of canvas rather than plastic it is molded plastic but look it's even got that characteristic look of bunched up canvas I am just blown away with the detail on this. In all honesty with you, I cannot find anything wrong. So I'm going to turn now to getting it running. Uh, so let's get it on the track and let's take a really good close look at it. The coach actually runs really well, reacting to twists, turns and undulations in the track as well as point work with remarkable ease. It's pretty free running. That extra ninth wheel, in inverted commas, actually doesn't touch the track, and uh, I think it works a lot better for that as well. Running around the layout, there's not even a hint of sway. It just glides around. One small issue that I have found is that the lighting can be a bit dim under very bright lighting conditions. And even in the dark, you can see it, but... It's not as bright as I've seen from some other coaches, but then again, I think it's very difficult to strike a balance on this. And uh, there is a bit of flickering I found when it's going through some point work. It's something that does afflict other coaches that have internal lighting. And I think the only way to sort this would either to fit some kind of a capacitor system or go down the battery lighting option, which in conjunction with LEDs does seem to give some really good battery life. I've turned the lighting really down low up here, and this is so that I can now demonstrate to you the lighting function on this coach. So we're using the lighting wand, everything's in shadow because it just shows up a lot better in this light. Um, but we're going to wave the wand across the roof and you may hear the slight click of that reed switch as the lights come on. And there we have it. We've got the lights on. And I'm just going to turn all the lights off. And you can see that it is quite a um, subdued lighting effect. What you'll have to trust me on is that it looks a lot brighter to naked eyes than the camera can pick up here. But certainly if we get in close there you can see the interior lit up. We can see those wonderful clerestory lights all lit up and it really is something special. And uh, as I say it does look a lot brighter uh, to the naked eye. And I'm just going to wave the wand over, turn it off and turn it on and it's really really easy to do. Rails of Sheffield have a long history of commissioning models that otherwise we would never find ready to run and this dynamometer car is just one in a long line of models. We've included a link in the description box down below to take you to the Rails of Sheffield special commissions and it's really well worth a browse because there is a lot of locomotives and rolling stock on there 
that is well worth taking a closer look and something to match every single period that you may model from era two right through to bang up to date modern image models. When it comes to running characteristics, as you saw in the video, it really does run well. The only gripe I have is that the internal lights are a little bit on the dim side. Now, they're probably pretty accurate for early coach lighting, but on a model layout, I think it would help a little bit to just be able to see them. Of course, there'd be purists who would argue that actually that gets away from the authenticity and it's probably one of those things that's very much a trade-off. Getting into the coach is reasonably easy and I will show you this because the interior is something that is truly special. And in a way, it's a shame that uh, normally you're just not going to be able to see it so well through the windows. Now, getting into this, that there is a sequence to follow. And uh, first up, actually, I've undone the screw without doing the couplings. Let me just, uh, you need to first up pull the coupling out of the NEM pockets that they're in. Do the one at the other end as well, actually. Um, you've got to then just slide the bogies off and uh, the other end don't put too much stress on the NEM assembly it's got a, a self-centering system uh, which a lot of coaches do come with now uh, I'm just going to pull that off and undo that screw on the bogey as well and both of these bogies are actually slightly different from each other and you can see there the pickups just sticking up in the middle. It really are a nice rendition of a Gresley type bogey. And it does leave me wondering whether uh, Rapido trains have any uh, designs on maybe making use of those, possibly with uh, articulated coach sets would be rather nice. Next up, we're gonna try and just part the sides away carefully just by sliding a fingernail between there. And you can see we just start to pop the coach away from the clips. Be careful, there are footboards and all sorts on these coaches. So you don't want to grip it by the wrong bit. You can see there, we just flipped it out, turn it over and we're gonna just very carefully work on the other side and the body just uh, unclips, turn it round, let's get the other end out. Just being a little bit careful what we grip hold of. And inside the coach, you can see there the lighting strip and that loudspeaker bullhorn type thing there is uh, attached to that. So I'm just going to put that to one side and this is the interior. As you can see, so much more detail. And this is the bit that I alluded to before. There is a toilet with a sink in there, which you just can't see unless you dismantle the coach, but it is there with all of the detail, the inside of the door, the paneling, it's all there. And I guess it was a case of, they must have had a meeting where they, they debated, do we model this or not? And somebody went, ah, I bet somebody will moan if we don't put it in. So. Let's put it in. And they did. And you can see there all of the other detail that you can't see through the windows. All these gauges and these dials are all perfectly printed. That's a bit like what we'd notice these days on the back head of uh, a locomotive in the cab. But really, it's so above and beyond the attention to detail. And um, one thing I will as well draw your attention to is these springs here are the contacts for the lighting. Now, if your lighting doesn't work out of the box, then one thing that uh, it is worth checking is that these springs can get pushed right in and jam. So it's always worth just checking them. And I know when mine arrived, uh, I couldn't get the lighting to work, but on dismantling, it was just these springs just pushed slightly too far down to make contact. But that is the interior of the coach and I did want to show you this simply because of how impressive 
this detail is. I mean, that toilet alone, because when you look there, when we slide everything back together, you just don't get to see it. Uh, and I find that truly amazing, that level of detail. Putting it back together just very carefully, get the clips to re-engage. And just there, on the other side there, there's a little bit of a, a clip that uh, you need to just make sure clips back in home. And just squeeze it in and you'll feel it just clip into place. The bogies, now these, make sure you get them the right way round. And there's a little key on the spigot, which uh, obviously helps you to locate them. So as you can see, it's all pretty easy. And that's what I like about the Rapido models. The detail is there, but it is not compromising other bits and pieces. So we're just going to make sure we get that the correct way around. Slide that in, put that screw back in. Once we've got these screws back in, then make sure you've got the couplings the right way up. And they just easily clip back into place. And of course, because they are NEM pockets, that does mean that we have all of that functionality to replace these if you want with something like KDs. And there you have it, as easy as that to get inside and really actually enjoy some of that exquisite detail that is in there. I'm going to turn now to the scores. And first up is build quality. Didn't really have any problems with mine. When it did arrive, the lights didn't work, but as I said before, it was a very easy fix and there is full aftermarket support for these and I know that Rails of Sheffield do have some spare parts so it's always worth contacting them just in case. But the problem on mine was just those springs that I showed you being squashed down a little bit and not making contact so easy enough to get it working. And looking online, I've not really seen anybody else saying that they've had any problems with these at all. So for build quality, I'm going to give this a 9.9. .9. When it came to running, it got through some very tight corners. In fact, radius 1 and in one case, under radius 1. It navigated through point work incredibly easily with no hint of derailment. There's good, easy movement uh, freedom with these bogies, and really there was just nothing to fault. So I'm going to give this 10 out of 10. When it comes to DCC fitting and innovation, I really like the fact that these come with lighting, and that magnetically actuated reed switch is really good. You don't end up with a little switch underneath that is in danger of getting damaged. But the lights were a little bit dim for my liking. They didn't really seem to show up all that well on the layout unless you turned all the lights off. And the reed switch was prone to being knocked. That said, if you knocked the coach, it could turn the lights off if they were already on or vice versa. And there was a degree of flickering as it transversed point work. And I think that the idea of having a small watch type battery uh, coupled with those LEDs is something that does probably work quite well. And um, it's maybe an area that they could have improved slightly. So I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. On accuracy and quality of finish, well, there is just nothing to fault. Everything about this coach that I could find was just perfect. It really is testament of the attention to detail that Rapido and Rails of Sheffield have gone to. Everything about this was, well, perfect. And... I think it's going to be a theme of this review, the word perfect. Nothing to fault, so again, another 10 out of 10. When it comes to value for money, at £140 to £150, pounds, these are an expensive item. But when we look at main range coaches from some of the ready-to-run manufacturers, they're already up to around half, if not over half of that, and they just continue to climb. 
What you get for that money is an exquisite model with such attention to detail. This is far and beyond anything else that we've seen ready to run in terms of coaching stock. And I think for that, it is pretty good value for money. You also don't really need more than one of these. There was only one prototype and it may have had different liveries and a few tweaks over the years, but certainly it's one that you can justify a single coach for your fleet and it will do you well. They're not asking you to buy a full rake of these because that's just not how they operated. So for that, consider it more akin to buying a locomotive than buying a coach. And certainly the detail on this is second to none. So for value for money, I'm going to give this a 9.1 out of 10. And that gives us a final score of 47.5 out of 50. This is a really nice model and probably one that ready to run we wouldn't have seen from the more mainstream manufacturers in their main ranges. But Rails of Sheffield has taken on an iconic item of rolling stock. And in conjunction with Rapido Trains, they really have brought something special to the market. I'd really love to see them do another run of these, maybe even tackling the Great Northern Railway iteration of these, which would require some modification to tooling to be able to make it possible. But I think that there really is a strong demand for these. It also makes me really look forward to the rest of the Rails of Sheffield Special Commissions. And certainly I am looking forward to some of the other models which they have got announced for imminent release this year. Well, thank you for joining me for that video. And I hope that you enjoyed taking a good close look at that model as much as I did as well. And it's going to be a model which is going to be running on Weir Yard an awful lot. I think I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of that. And certainly it's something that adds a little bit of something special to anybody's coaching stock fleet. Now, they're not currently available uh, anymore from Rails of Sheffield. They have sold so well that they have long since sold out. But we do have a link down below to some of the other special commissions from Rails of Sheffield. So you can go and have a browse at some of the other forthcoming models, including that improved precedent class locomotive. I'm really looking forward to that one. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying, you take great care of yourself. Happy modeling and bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, John N. from NC, and NYMR-ish. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.